So the Shadowhawk here is, is attacking the Jenner, hitting the center torso, hitting this. Yeah, that's fine. The Spider needs a 9. Rolls a 9! Unbelievable. I mean, we're still just hitting armor at this point. Fails that. Uh, needs a 7. Oh my god, the Assassin did land a hit on this one. It failed this one. So we're still, like, we're well underneath the, like, the, the expected success rate, our expected value. We're well below, and they're well above where they should be. They're hitting better than they should. We're hitting worse than we should. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't think it's just bias over here. Pretty sure that's true. <sighs> now, the Shadowhawk actually took 20 plus points of damage this round, which means it's forced to do a piloting check. Apparently, you get a uh, plus one to your difficulty from that. It actually failed, which is amazing. It fell taking some more damage, uh, and the pilot took some damage as well. We've got a prone Shadowhawk. RNG Jesus has not completely forsaken us, but that was still kind of crappy. What's good, really good about this is the fact that we are now adjacent in melee next to someone who's prone. So we are going to stomp the hell out of this guy. We need a one to hit him. So uh, if we somehow fail this one, which is literally impossible, then the salt would be really real. And the spider, same thing. We're gonna kick you. We actually need a four on this one uh, because it's based on your piloting and the, uh, the spider has crap piloting. But a four, watch us miss and then fail our piloting check and fall over. All right, we hit both times, which is good. Um, we still haven't done any internal structure damage over here. It has no more armor, it's arm, which is nice, but yeah. <sighs> what are we at? We're still, we're still behind on our BV rating at this point. Uh, we've got initiative, which is spiffy keen, so they'll, they'll just shuffle their tanks around. Um, the, sh the gener- okay, at this point, what do I need to get up? Oh, you're not gonna tell me the number here? It'll tell me once I try to lock in. I kind of want to start running away with the Jenner. Because it literally- it can't shoot or anything, so like... We need a 9. Although, if it just stands up, it can do some kicks. No. I'm just gonna stand there. It's fine. Because what's going to happen is it's just going to fall over some more. We'll take some more damage. We'll lose some more battle value for doing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, the Panther is still going to stand here. What we're hoping to do is get some more easy shots on the Shadowhawk. Push comes to shove. Maybe we can get some shots on the Phoenix Hawk. Uh, the Phoenix Hawk. So yeah, the Panther will stand there. So here's the thing. Now he's forced to move his mechs. The Phoenix Hawk just runs away. Now, this mech can't move forward or this way or this way. It can move this way, but that's it. I think I'm going to take the Locust and I'm just going to turn you. Because if he fails to stand up, then the Locust will actually be able to take some shots. He All he did is stand up and face this way. We're, we're lined up for some PPC shots from the rear, the Locust shots from the rear. The Spider will be on the, on the right arc, not the rear. The Assassin will be um, forward arc, I think. I see no reason to move the Spider. Now, he can torso twist and really unleash, unload on the Spider. But screw it. I want this guy dead. My Spider... My Spider's actually taken a lot of damage. Hold on, I may rethink this. Can I move here... And I actually would have enough movement to rotate to face this way. Yeah, turn right. Turn right again. I'd face this way. Oh, I'd be firing through the woods, though. So I'd get plus one for moving and plus one for firing through the woods. Now, I'm betting he's going to focus on the Jenner rather than the Spider. You know what? I'm just going to leave the Spider there. So we don't generate to hit penalties. Yeah, he's just going to focus on this. Meanwhile, the assassin may also just stand here as well to not generate any penalties to hit. I think my donation pop-up is dead. That is entirely possible. I will reload that page and take a look in a second. Uh, I did miss one from Cool Man Fight a little earlier. Sorry about that, Cool Man. Hogan Denmark wins the World Cup! I'm having pora bacon pie for dinner. Oh, that's good. What's your favorite pie? Um, that Probably that one. I don't know what pora bacon pie is, but it sounds delicious. I could go for a savory pie right now. 
I mean, North America, when you refer to pie, you usually mean like a sweet kind of berry pie, like a dessert pie. As opposed to, say, like, in the UK, when pie, like, seems to nine times out of ten mean a savory pie. But I'm, so I'm a fan of those. And Friendly Fire, thank you very much. Looking at your dice rolls, I decided to give you 2d6 dollars. Lucky! <laughs> so, so three, so you rolled a three. Fantastic. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna stand here with the spider, I'm gonna stand here with the assassin. So that we have maximum to hit rolls, and we're gonna try to take this bastard out. Um, so the Shadowhawk... Oh, the Shadowhawk, that's why he just stood there. He tried to stand up, failed, fell over, um, and then tried to stand up again and succeeded the second time. But that, that why, that's why he was out. It takes two movement points to, at each attempt to stand up. Okay. All right. This, this is when we end this. Now, the Jenner still has no ability to shoot because uh, the Jenner can't prop himself up. Then we're going to go to this panther over here, and we're going to take the shot on his rear arc. Now, I really would like the kill to go to my own mechs, um, so, but it's all simultaneous, so it's not like you can tune things. Just because whoever gets the kill, I think it's bonus XP, but that's okay. Um, so we'll take the PPC shot at 6+, plus. we may as well take the smurm shot at a 9+. Plus. The spider, uh, well, well, it doesn't actually matter, but tell you what, I'll start with the locust. Nice little rear arc fire over here. Uh, we need seven pluses with the medium lasers and the small lasers. We're unloading everything into his back. It'll only generate nine heat, which means we'll have none. The spider is going to shoot this guy. We need eight pluses over here. Pew, pew. And then the assassin over here. Um, the LRM needs a 12 plus. Although, you know what? We're going to fire it anyway, because we're not. We're only going to generate... So we're going to generate three heat from firing the medium laser, which needs a six plus. And two more heat from firing our SRM2, which needs a six plus. So that'll leave us at 5 heat right now, so we may as well spend the 2 extra heat with the Lerms. It's some extra ammo that's unlikely to hit, but it's not more heat. Okay, the Panther hits with the PPC, finally penetrating, oh, it's the right arm, uh, which we had done a fair amount of damage to, so it penetrated that, did some internal structure damage, failed a crit roll. The SRM failed to hit, rolling a 2 just to rub it in. Uh, meanwhile, the Shadowhawk uh, did only hit... It, it missed this one and only got one missile in the SRM2. It's hitting this Jenner some more, but hasn't killed anything else. It even tried to use its uh, LRM5, but missed there. Now, the Locust. Right over here. Needs a 7 hit, needs a 7 hit, needs a 7 hit, needs a 7 hit. Okay, that was a little bit better than our expected value on this one here. But I mean, come on, we were, we were owed. We were owed some rolls. Um, and so we are keep hitting from the rear here. So we are hitting the uh, left torso rear. Boom, some armor is left. We hit the left arm, um, dealing one point of internal damage, no crit. I think, actually, I don't know how much penetrated through, but we, we hit some armor and some of it is internal. Actually, I guess it was all internal. Then we hit the right arm, because of course we're gonna spread out our all damage, but the right arm had already been terribly, terribly damaged before. Um, so that right arm just got blown off. No critical, doesn't matter, the right arm goes away. And then here's the good one. We hit the left torso rear again. So we hit it here, one armor point remaining. We hit it again, so it's three damage. So one was soaked by the armor, and we did two points of internal structure damage. And finally on a crit roll, we actually rolled a crit. In fact, we rolled good enough to roll two crits. The first hit was on the AC5, which would disable the weapon. More meaningfully though, the second hit was on the AC5 ammo pack, which then immediately exploded over here. And so that's gonna take out the left torso, but because we're running in 3025 and there's no case uh, modules for these mechs, that damage is then gonna spill over to the next body part, which is the center torso, and blow the whole thing up. So the Shadowhawk has taken catastrophic damage, the auto eject system was on, so the pilot is trying to make a piloting check to see if he gets out safely. He failed the roll, which means he's going to take damage upon landing, which actually caused him to black out. The Shadowhawk itself automatically gets destroyed by the ejection because it blows up the head to do that. So it's it's dead in like a million different ways. Everything explodes. Boom, 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 boom. And the pilot already ejected, so the pilot didn't take any damage from the explosion, but he did take two damage landing here and failed to stay conscious. So, uh, amazingly, the spider missed both of its shots again anyway. I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. And remember, everything's simultaneously. Simultaneous. So the spider misses both of these. Womp womp. The assassin 
uh, does land some shots, which none of these matter and weren't going to be the killing blow. So, uh, very proud of our, our Locust. Our lightest mech, our 20-ton mech, does get the kill over here, which is pretty nice. Okay. Um, and then there's melee attacks. Well, the Shadowhawk's completely destroyed. We could melee the building here with the Assassin. We're not going to do that. Uh, the Locust kid... Oh my god, we can try to step on the Mech Warrior. We can actually try to crush the Mech Warrior. It's plus three the difficulty for stomping infantry, because they're quite small and they run around a lot. Now, if we don't kill the Mech Warrior, we get to take her as a prisoner. I think it's a her, right? Azra? I was pretty sure. So, I think what we do is we don't do that. We're just going to go and take a prisoner. I mean, that would be that would be very mean-spirited. That would be, you know, against the Geneva Convention or something like that. Um, same thing with the spider. Uh, interesting, the spider comes up as a physical attack, but it's actually, there's none of them are lit up here. Oh, I'd probably have to click on one of the buildings or some damn thing. Or, no, I'd have to click on the target here. So, again, you could try to kick the mech warrior. We're not going to do that. So, the round is over. Oh, that's right. I had set in, I had told the game to automatically de declare a victory when someone has 25% of their battle value displayed. We have destroyed 30%, 34% of their battle value by destroying that mech and doing miscellaneous damage here and there. Therefore, we are victorious. I did not think that that would happen. That arm quill just blew off could be used as a club. Yeah, if you're in the forest, you can grab a tree as a club, or if someone blows off an arm, you can use it as a club. Now, trees are one use only. Are arms multi-use? I don't remember. With your luck, your mech could have fallen over and taken a crick to the CT. That's true. I could have tried to step on the mech warrior, missed, done a piloting roll for a missed kick, failed, fallen over, taking critical damage. So, yeah. So we don't have to save a record. If we hit no, it'll uh, import. It'll still import the stuff with mech HQ. God damn. That battle takes so long. Battle of light jumping mechs in bad weather takes a thousand years. So... We were the winner, and therefore we control the battlefield at the end of the battle. So we will say yes to this, and then we get our stats. So we got some stats. The Jenner is heavily damaged. The Spider is heavily damaged. The Assassin and the Locust didn't take any damage, which is nice. So um, we did not lose the attached um, unit from our employer, the Panther. In fact, the Panther didn't even take any damage, I think. Uh, we did take a little bit of damage. Crapkin over here on the Jenner and Countess Potato on the Spider both took a little bit of damage. And then we've got Salvage. Now... The Phoenix and both uh, vehicles did escape because they weren't they weren't crippled. Their legs weren't like blown away or anything like that. So they were able to run away. And of course, the Shadowhawk was destroyed completely. So unfortunately, there's not going to be any salvage in this fight. Womp womp. Um, and did we not actually capture that other mech warrior? I think we'd actually have to have scooped her up or something like that. Um, oh, Azra's not even in the list. Why is Azra not in the list? I don't know. She was blacked out. Should we not have captured her? She wasn't dead. You caught her. Oh, these are your people? No. No, no, these are not my people. Said you captured in the last phase. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe it'll come up on a different screen. Oh, right over... Well... No, she died. Azra did die. So, um, Sergeant Lorax, who piloted the Locust, is claiming the kill on the Shadowhawk. But uh, Azra did get killed somewhere in there. Maybe bled out? I don't know. Boom. Anyway, we got victory. No salvage. Yeah, disconnected the server. That's fine. Come back over here. Uh, we got to reload our armor. Our ammo. That's going to be fine. Uh, we take a little bit of armor damage on the assassin. The locust just a little, a, a couple of scratches over here. That's fine. The spider, uh, replace armor, replace armor, repair mech left torso, but it's not a replace, so that's okay. We'll take some amount of time to do that, but that's fine. And then the Jenner is the big problem. So there's um, salvaging the upper arm actuator, right? Because we lost, we lost the arms. A bunch of things happened. We don't actually currently have any jump jets to replace those. We don't have a replacement mech left arm either. Uh, we have no medium lasers? No, we have some medium lasers over here. 
Well, let's take a look. Anyway, I'm going to use the mass repair salvage tool. Because, I mean, what I could do is you could do it individually. So the assassin, I could be like, okay, this reload over here. Harmonium is the tech that's assigned to you. We will do the task. You'll do rolls. You'll succeed. Excellent. You'll still have time left. So we'll reload the ammo bin. Excellent. That's good, too. And we place the armor. So we can do this sort of one at a time, and that's fine. Or you can say mass repair. We'll select everything. Um, we want to repair all the things as possible. Start mass repair salvage. Done, 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 done. Um, found missing location mech left arm on the Jenner, which contains one part. Going to remove all parts for seating. Uh, not enough time to finish all the repairs. There are still there are still six parts that are not being worked on these two units. If we take a look at the acquisition, so we have some parts missing. Um, we're not going to be in GM mode for this. Let's turn that off. There we go. So we have some parts missing, and in theory. Oh, some part, they might literally just be unavailable, is part of it. Yeah, that's probably it. We're probably somewhere where we can't buy some of these missing parts. So, a jump jet. So, the Jenner is a 35-ton mech. So, oh, not purchase units. Purchase parts. Um, jump jet. So, for a 35-ton mech, yeah, it's impossible to find any on the planet where we are. So, and that's probably going to be the same with some of these others. I'm really confused about the medium laser. Do we? How do we not have a medium laser? Maybe because these are in the warehouse and we're doing repairs out in the field? Yeah. And then the, the, the thing is, we're probably going to have to use these guys in future fights. Um, because we have someone assigned to logistics, do we not? I mean, not solo logistics. Oh, you don't have the arm to repair the medium laser. Oh, okay, can't replace the laser with the- that's the problem. It's the laser that goes in the arm. Is what people are figuring. Yeah, two medium lasers that go in the left arm. Yes, okay. So until we get the left arm, we can't repair those. So we might go into battle with a very damaged Jenner, for example. Out of curiosity, are there any units on the market that we might be interested in purchasing? We only have 1.6 million C-bills, so no, we can't afford any of those, unfortunately. Although we could even get some vehicles and, and pad out our lances that way. That's a possibility. Huh. Oh, do we have any injuries? Yes, we do. Uh, Countess Potato and Sergeant Krapkin are both going to be looked at by Dr. Narnak over here. Uh, Countess Potato has a laceration on his head, and Krapkin a laceration on her head as well. Um, we can actually check that. Uh, Krapkin over here. Yeah. Boom! Head damage. And Countess Potato. Yeah, that's that. Now ah, they should get looked at pretty quickly. So what we'll do, I don't think we'll do another combat because they do take a little while, but we're going to advance the dime a little bit and see what comes up next. I will keep the uh, scout lance. We need to have something assigned to, assigned to scouting. Now I could deploy the heavy lance to do that. Which might be interesting. I guess one of the big questions is how fast is my heavy lance? The Marauder moves at a four. The Screaming Hawk, five, and it's got the Jump Jets. The Cicada, which is also in our in our heavier lance, does move at an eight. The Wolverine, five, eight. It's not the slowest possible heavy lance. The Marauder is particularly slow. And on scouting type missions, you come into the battle um, on ra like delayed rounds based on your speed. So in a, in a scouting type mission, the Marauder will show up quite late in the battle compared to some of the other things, which could be very bad. Lyran Scout Lance. A Lyran Scout Lance is what? Four heavies? Is the joke? Oh, you're right. I don't have enough AS techs. You're absolutely right. Done. Thank you very much. So, uh, we'd have more time doing it. Because it's six per, per tech, and I forgot that we'd hired more techs there. I think we might have to do something like that. 
you like potentially just take the Flemish Lance out of commission for now with the missing arm, rather than going to battle as is. Four assault mechs is that is it? preferably four 100 ton assaults. That's the Lyran Scotland. So that's how Stanner, Steiner, right? Of the Lyran whatever. I never get the names straight. They have like. Because they, they're, they're, they're sort of autocratic sort of structure, they tend to have like a lot of effectively like rich gits as their mercenary commanders, or they're, they're sorry, they're, they're mech commanders and whatnot, they're mech warriors. So they're not necessarily that skilled, but they have like the yeah, biggest um, production base of anyone. So as a result, they, um, they, uh, they have like upset, very much heavier mechs than everyone else. So that's their, their joke, that's their idea. So who is that with the whiskey and chocolate? Who dead? It's Righteous Fury! Hey, thank you very much! First time catching the stream! Thanks for all the content on YouTube that keeps me sane at work. Cheers! Well, thank you very much! A little bit different of a game that we're doing here, but it's gonna be okay. So, um... Here, we'll just, uh... Yeah, no, we'll leave it at it. It's fine. It could possibly go wrong. So we advance. It's a Monday. We get another job. Oh! We get a chase where we're counted as a defender. So this is interesting because it's the inverse of things. Um, in this situation, we'd be, again, we'd be the defender. Um, we'd have to prevent at least 50% of the enemy from reaching the north edge. Which basically, basically means we have to kill half of the enemies that show up. We're going to get a hunchback attached to us, which is nice. This is how many people are going to try to make it through. And they're also going to get more reinforcements on the north edge. So we start in the south. They start on the south. This doesn't make any sense. Okay, no, we're all going to start on the south. They're trying to make it to the north. Really, I think this is effectively, because of the way the AI works, I very much expect what's going to happen is the... Um, Oh no, they are set to try to withdraw right away. Yeah, so the bot does get set up. It's forced withdrawal. It's trying to try to withdraw immediately. It's going to automatically flee the board when it hits the edge of the map, which is the north edge. So this bot, and it's set, it's low bravery, high self-preservation, low aggression. So all these things are going to mostly, they're just going to do what I tried to do on the other one, which is run away. On the other hand, when I was doing the run away, there, there was only four of me, actually five, not a million. But there might be a lot of target opportunities. That is very interesting. So this is going to be a Badlands instead of a city as well. So they're not going to have as much cover and stuff. Um, the Rocky Valley is probably going to be a lot of height issues, which means they're going to be quite slow as well. I could reroll some of these, but I don't want to. I think daylight and clear, we've got maximum fire potential. That's really good. Since we didn't get a fight... Um, event, because I think this is... I'm assuming this is a... a scout... event, but I actually don't know. If we're on the Defender, is this actually a fight one? I guess we'll find out when we, whenever anything gets auto-assigned. Okay, you're trying to salvage some stuff, which is good. So, this is going to be the 30th. I'm just going to advance to the 30th here. Oh, before I do that... Personnel Market. Uh, a doctor becomes available. I don't think we really need a doctor. But what we do need is Apocalypse Oil. Apocalypse Oil. Apocalypse Owl over here is a 5-3 mech pilot. Congratulations, um, Sergeant. Actually, you know what? You're getting Lieutenant Junior Grade. Congratulations. We're going to give you a goddamn mech. I think we're going to like somewhat demote one of our people. We're going to steal a mech away from someone. See, like six, seven, Countess Potato, and who else was really bad? We got a lot of them, and Crapkin, both of whom are injured. See, they're injured. We we gotta we gotta go and pull them out of this. It's only it's only reasonable. That beat up Jenner. I'm gonna pull Countess Potato out of here. 
And instead, I'm going to assign Apocalypse Owl to the spider. Because she's much more effective. In fact, I might want to replace someone in the primary, the, 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 the command lands, but that'll have to do. And you got a tactics rating and everything. Like, you're pretty good. Is this a Belgian game? I keep seeing Flemish and Wallonian in chat. Yeah, well, it's the Belgian bruisers. We have our Wallonian lance and our Flemish lance. Hmm. In here, you saw a deployed unit? Ah! Ah, okay. So that's why there's so many opponents over here. It is, in fact, the Wallonian lance that's going to be responsible here, which makes sense because we're on the defense here. So, yeah, the Wallonian lance, the command is the one that's gonna be responsible. So we're gonna to get to do a roll to see if the Flemish Lance are gonna reinforce. So I have a random number generator over here. I'm gonna roll. Because we have a Scout Lance that has no mission this week, if we get a five or a six, we're allowed to reinforce the battle with our Scout Lance. We got a five! Hey! Now, I mean, you know, I don't know if, if we necessarily want to deploy our half-broken Scout Lance to this, but we are gonna do that. So I'm gonna go and add you in there, boom, done. And then we can manually do this. We, we don't have to, because you, you're automatically getting deployed. So I don't think that changes anything. We'll double check. If we go and advance to the 30th, advance, advance. Yeah, so both of our lances are gonna be deployed here in defense. That's gonna be pretty good. 